Hello there everyone and how are we all? It's Simon back here again for a bit of a different episode of, uh, well, a bit of a different sort of video really, compared to what I usually do with recordings, doing games and stuff and that lot. I'm going to give you my sort of like, uh, sort of my thoughts um, and comments on the current World Darts Match Play, PDC World Match Play of Darts, which uh, starts very, very soon. And the draw was yesterday. And some very interesting uh, sort of fixtures um, and very sort of big names against each other in the first round. So I'm going to give you my thoughts and my scores, what it will be, my thoughts on who I think the winner will be. Also my thoughts on who could, uh, not sort of like an outsider, there's no, well, it shouldn't be, there's no such thing as an outsider because they're all sort of good each, each other on the day. Um, I'll give you some of my thoughts on sort of a person who you don't think would get there, but probably could get sort of like to late stages, like semi-final, final. Anyway, so without rambling on for ages and ages and ages, folks, like I say, as you know, I'm a massive darts fan. I've been for sort of 30 years. Um, picked up my first dart many, many years ago when I was seven. Hit my first 180 when I was eight. So, um, so many years ago. How time flies anyway. So, uh but anyway, so anyway, so enough about that. So let's get into the draw and let's sort of see, um, obviously I'll give you my thoughts on the prediction of the score. Um, and I think, it's like I say, it's going to be some interesting games. There is some interesting games there. And I really am looking forward to it and looking forward to hopefully um, be able to watch some of it. So anyway, so let's get into the f sort of the sort of. I mean, I don't think these are in order as such, folks. I do not know, so apologies if they're not in order. But I'm going to start with the top of the list. What I've got on my um, sort of booklet, sort of thing. So the very f sort of so the, the very first game on my sort of bit of paper that I've got is Peter Wright v Madders Rasma. Now it's an interesting game as for sort because of, Peter Wright seems to be sort of in and out of form at the moment. Probably not playing sort of too well, as you know. He's now if you keep changing his darts as always, um, sort of change his darts again um, when I was watching uh, Players Championship recently. Um, so, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so he changed his darts again. Madders Rasma, interesting. He's sort of come on sort of leaps and bounds the last sort of couple of years or so. I still don't think he's going to beat Peter Wright. I think Peter Wright, he turns up on the big stage. He's a world-class player and, he, and he's, you know, he's number one in the world for a reason. So... So I think Peter Wright wins. I think he wins. I'm going to say probably 10-5. I don't think it would be sort of too... It could be 10-5, 10-6, but I think Peter Wright wins 10-5. Anyway, so a next interesting game, which is, I suppose, a little bit unpredictable, that is Christoph Ratajski v. Stephen Bunting. Now, it's sort of the both... Well, Stephen Bunting starting to come into a little bit more form recently. Um, been playing some nice darts. Christoph Ratajski sort of, sort of gone off a little bit, not sort of doing as well as um, well he was sort of last year, I suppose. He was doing really, really well. He was beating some big names, winning tournaments. Um, I think he even did a back-to-back -back tournament, I think, in the Players' Championship. I think it was last year or the year before. But uh, not sort of playing as well as such. I think he's just been a little bit unlucky, I think, with the players that he's coming across, I think. But... Um, but a very, very tight game, and I can't really sort of predict what would happen. But I'm going to go for... <clears throat> Do you know what? I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for a 10-8 Stephen Bunton. I just think he's probably got a little bit... He's, he's, he's in better form, put it that way. He's in better form. But uh, I am looking forward to that. So, uh, so yeah, Stephen Bunton, I think, around about 10-8, 10-7, something like that. So the next game I've got on the list is Johnny Clayton, the, well, just the ferret. He's just been playing phenomenal darts. Not so much recently. He's sort of been a bit off the radar, but uh, still plays some steady darts. He's always gives 100%, he's always does. The Roby John Rodriguez, who has really come on leaps and bounds recently, um, played really, really well. Um, I think it was a tournament in Germany, I think it was. He got to the final, he lost to Luke Humphreys. A um, very, very, very good game indeed. Um, he really has come on some leaps and bounds, Roby John Rodriguez, in the past few months. Been playing some steady darts. He sort of took it to another level, which is nice to sort of see. But it's a, it's a really tough game to call. But I think Johnny Clayton will sneak it. I think it'll be 10-7, I'm going to say, to Johnny Clayton. 10-7, 10-8, I think. It's going to be very, very close. Depends which Johnny Clayton turns up. The right Johnny Clayton turns up. To be fair, all dark players, if they sort of do turn up, you never know what's going to happen. But I think Johnny Clayton 
wins it 10-7. So, uh, on to the next a very interesting game, as all of them are. Um, Dimitri Vandenberg v Callum Rids. Now, this is a very interesting one because uh, Dimitri, he sort of won the tournament previously, but he sort of went off the radar and then sort of come back onto the radar and playing some very nice darts again uh, from what I've seen. Callum Rids playing some very good steady darts as well and, and popping in massive averages for fun. Um, and it's going to be make for an interesting game. Callum Rids, one of the quickest players on the tour. Um, how would I call it? I'm going to stick my neck out and say I think Dimitri Vandenberg wins. I'm going to, it's going to be tight. I'm going to say 10 8. I think Dimitri will win. I don't think it'd be. Ooh, I don't know. It could be. It depends which Callum is. If Callum is, it could be ten eight either way, either side because you just don't you know which Dimitri Vandenberg turns up or Callum Ridge turns up. You never know. But I'm going to stick my neck out on the line and I'm going to put Dimitri Vandenberg, the uh, D- Dimitri Vandenberg winning ten eight. So on to the game, which I mean, there's three or four games on this list which I think are very tasty, but this is right up there. Michael Van Gerwen back at the World Match Play against Adrian Lewis. Wow, what a game that is, folks. Um, Adrian Lewis obviously won a Players' Championship recently. Um, Getting to a bit of form. MVG, you don't know what you're going to get from him. You know, MVG, he can average 95 and smash people, and he can average 115 and 20 and still smash people. You know, that's how good the guy is. Adrian Lewis, he's been playing some very nice darts. He's averaged over 100 a couple of times, especially in the Players' Championship. Very, very, very good player at the moment. Um, and good to see him, obviously, sort of back in the uh, sort of the big time as well. Um, but, yeah, so... But a very... Like I say, it's a... It's a I mean, I know it's on, on, on their day, MVG should sort of win it, but if the right Adrian Lewis turns up, you just never, never know. So I'm going to go for a prediction of MVG will win 10-7. I think he'll probably just have a little bit too much. MVG has had a bit of a break. It could hinder him. It could sort of boost him because he's had that rest. So I'm going to say MVG to win 10-7. I'm just going to take a quick drink, folks. So I do apologise for going on forever about this, by the way. There's quite a few fixtures yet. So this could be quite a long video. So apologies for being so boring. So probably the next biggest game, I think, in my eyes, probably the, the biggest, I think, probably close to MVG and Adrian Lewis, is Joe Cullen v Damon Hetta. What a tasty game that is. That is an absolute monster of a game. Joe Cullen, obviously, really has stepped it up this year um, and last year been playing phenomenal darts for the past i'll say 12 to 18 months two years or so been really come on leaps and bounds and sort of become the player that he uh sort of should have been but a lot of people would take some time to get there damien hetter wow what can you say um obviously world cup winner with Simon whitlock um who's not actually in the uh match pole match play this year which is uh it's a shame to see but anyway um Another player is on phenomenal form, been averaging some absolute monsters. Um, you, this this one is so 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 tight to call, very tight. Oh good god! I'm gonna sneak it to Damon Hetter ten eight. I think he might just sneak it on, just literally form alone. Not saying Cullen's not been playing bad. I just think on form Hetter is probably the better player at the moment. So anyway, so and the next game is James Wade v Martin Lookman, uh, Lukeman, sorry, um, another sort of very good game. Martin Lukeman been come on some right leaps and bounds, beat some very big names. Um, I believe he reached the final this year as well in a PDC tournament. Been playing well. James Wade, what can you say about him? Uh, he's top five in the world, I think. I think he's number three in the world at the moment. I think just so consistently such a good player has been for the best part of 15 years plus he's just been a brilliant player and fantastic to watch and uh, when he when he's on he's on when he's off he's terrible like most players are anyway so I'm gonna probably favor you never know I mean Martin Lukeman you just don't know it's his debut this year um, will the pressure get to him I don't know but I'm gonna give it to James Wade 
I'm going to say probably 10-6. Um, <clears throat> I think you probably, like I say, as most of the games I pretty much sort of said, probably has just a little bit too much and has a lot of experience at the match play as well. So, next game, we're sort of nearly halfway through now, folks, <laughs> so do apologise. Anyway, so the next game is another tasty game, and sort of licking my lips, sort of seeing this game when I sort of see it drawn out, is Luke Humphreys v Nathan Aspinall. Now, another tasty game. Um, Nathan Aspinall come back to some sort of form, obviously, after because he had sort of surgery as well, I think he did. Uh, I might be wrong, folks. So people probably sort of put in the comments if for people who sort of obviously go onto my channel and watch this video. Um, yeah, Luke Humphreys probably one of the form players uh, so far this year. Um, he's just been phenomenal. I think he's won what five tournaments. Um, for me, he's probably been the most improved player probably in the last twelve to eighteen months. I think probably the best player in the twelve to eighteen months, as in. Well, that's a bit sort of bold to say he's been the best player, but he's he's up there for being one of the best players in the last 12 to 18 months. And I think um, he will go far this year in it. I think he might uh, have a sneaky little shot, you know. You never know. So I'm going to, obviously, as you sort of know, folks, I'm probably going to favour it to... Oh, there's a little spider just come across. <laughs> so a little spider just come across on my bed. Anyway, so I'm going to give it to Luke Humphreys just literally on literally pure form, not to disrespect Nathan Aspinall. I just think, like I said, I think Luke Humphreys has been so good. I just think he's going to have a bit too much. I'm going to say 10-8. I think it's going to be close. I just think, like I said, Luke Humphreys is going to have a little bit too much for him. So 10-8, um, I think, to Luke Humphreys. So going to the next game, I'm going to try and rush these for as quick as I can. Gerwin Price for Martin Schindler. Martin Schindler, another player who's sort of come on leaps and bounds this year, is now the number one German player in the world. I th number one German player, I think. Um, he's been playing some brilliant darts, phenomenal darts, and uh, obviously now at the world match play. Gerwin Price seems to be sort of in and out at the moment of form. Uh, we don't know which Gerwin Price is going to turn up, but if the Gerwin Price turns up with who we know, I think he wins comfortably. But you never know, Martin Schindler, he has banged some absolutely monster averages. Uh, being it's the big stage, um, I think Gerwin Price will just have the edge. I think he wins. I think he wins 10-7. Uh, I think he's just going to have probably a little bit too much. Probably 10-7, 10-6, something like that. So, so let's get into the next game. So one of my sort of uh, sort of favourite players, probably one of my... Well, one of the players in my eyes, one of the best players not to win a major, and that is Dave Chisnell um, v Kim Hybrex, another player who's been um, in some very decent form recently, along with Dave Chisnell. Another one tight one to call. Uh, don't know how this is going to go, but it's going to be tight again. I think 10-8 either way. It could be anything, really. I'm probably just going to favour Chizzy, I think, I think because of literally... Actually, I don't know. I don't know. It's 10-8 either way, I think. I'm going to give it to Dave Chisnell. I think he gets through just. Um, so hopefully he goes far in this. So next game is Rob Cross v Chris Doby. Another good game, um, as all of these are, to be fair. Um, I think Rob Cross probably might have a little bit too much for Chris Doby. Chris Doby, don't get me wrong, he's been, a, he's this, been this talent for a couple of years now and he sort of hasn't really sort of broke through, broke through yet. Uh, maybe it could be his time. This year, you never know. And maybe it could be his time in this world match play. You just don't know. But I'm going to give it to Rob Cross. I think he just probably has a little bit too much more power scoring-wise. I think he's going to probably win 10-7. Um, but who's to say Chris Doby won't win it? You never know. So going into the last five games. So we got Michael Smith v. Andrew Gilding. Uh, Gilding, sorry. Now, Michael Smith obviously has been unbelievable this year. Obviously won that tournament in Holland this year. Um, faced a lot of stick, obviously, uh, crowd-wise and stuff. But uh, won in the end, beat uh, Danny Nopper in the final. And uh, been, been a phenomenal player for the past... Well, he's been a brilliant player for the last few years. Just hasn't still quite got through that breakthrough yet of a major tournament. Hopefully this could be the one for him. Andrew Gilding, wow, what can you say about him? He's been unbelievable in the past few months. Been throwing some absolute phenomenal darts. 
Um, won a, won a, I think he won a tournament as well, not so long ago, the Players' Championship, another one. Um, another player to sort of keep an eye because you just don't know. He's, he's a brilliant, brilliant player. Um, it's a very tough game to call, but I think just because of the score, and again, like Rob Cross and Chris Dover, I think Michael Smith will probably just have a little bit too much for him. Um, I'm going to say probably 10. Oh, it's going to be close. I'm going to say 10A, I think, Michael Smith. I think he wins just about that. So, four games to go. So, we're going to go Jose de Souza v Gabriel Clemens. A very, very, another mouth-watering game, as all of them are pretty much. Um, Jose de Souza. I saw a bit of form recently um, from what I've seen on uh, sort of like the box. And, uh, yeah, not too sure um, what's happened to him. I mean, I think he's just... I just don't think he's in a good bit of form at the moment. I think he's in a bit of a sort of a dodgy period, as they say, sort of thing, going for a dodgy period. Gabriel Clements been throwing some really nice starts, obviously, recently as well. Um, can I see Gabriel beating him? Yes. Will it happen? I don't think it will. I think Jose de Souza will. Well, it depends which Jose de Souza turn up. It's another tight one. I'm going to favour Jose the Silva. I'm going to say 10 8. Um, but like I say, as many other games, they can be literally the same score the other way. So, so Dirk van Dijvenboda. Dirk van Dijvenboda, that's the one. <laughs> v. Ryan Searle. Now, another an absolute mouth watering game. Um, it's Ryan Searle playing some phenomenal darts again at the moment. Dirk van Dijvenboda. He's just been on an absolute fire. Um, he's another player that's won a tournament recently. And I think he's going to go a long way this year. I think a lot of people are going to surprise. Uh, going to be not so, so much surprised because we know what the power he's got as in scoring and finishing. Um, it's another tough game to call. I'm going to say another 10-8. Who would go to? You can call it both ways. I think Dirk van Dijven Road will probably just have a bit... Oh, I don't know, actually. It's going to be close. I think it would go 10-8 uh, Van Dijvenboda. So you never know. So the last two remaining games, we have got Danny Noppert v Brendan Dolan. Now, Danny Noppert obviously has been phenomenal again this year. Brendan Dolan has been playing some very good darts as well. And I think recently won a tournament as well. So a lot of these have won tournaments recently. Um... It's a tough one to call, but I think Danny Knopper will just have a little bit too much. I think he's been probably one of the best top 10 players in the past two years. I think he's been that good. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me um, if he goes really, really far in it this year. I've even had a little bet on him to do well in the world for next year. So, <laughs> But anyway, that's a different story. So I'm going to favour Danny Knopper. I'm going to say 10-7. Danny Knopper, I think he will have just a little bit too much. Like I say, he's been in better form. Um, I'm hoping he goes sort of far because uh, here we get to see a different sort of name on that trophy. So the final game I've got on my list and, well, say the save the best till last. One of my favourite players um, has been for many, many years, um, even though, as you know, folks, um, if you don't know, my favourite player is Raven van Barneveld has been for years, which I'm not going to get into, but he's just been, he's a phenomenal player. So this is probably sort of, I suppose, my second favourite player on his day. Um, Gary Anderson v Dal Gurney. Um, another very interesting one, and a lot of rumours going about this year about is this Gary Anderson's last world match play. Um, there's a lot of rumours flying around that this could be the last one, but I'm hoping it isn't. Because the bloke, even though he is in his 50s now, he's still a phenomenal talent. He has a wonderful throw. It's, it's, he's still got it. He can still smash anyone on his day. He's that good. But as he's obviously, as he's sort of got older, he's doing other things. And, uh, you know, he's not practicing as much. He never, he's never been a practicer anyway. Um, I just think, uh, yeah, it's... Um, I don't think... I think that might be a wasp in my room, folks. Do apologise if I scream like a girl. But uh, no, it's not. It's a it's a blue bottle fly. <laughs> They're scared. They're get buzzing around my ear. So, like I said, folks, sorry about that. So, Gary Anderson v. Daryl Gurney, very interesting. Like I said, Daryl Gurney not playing the best starts at the moment. It's sort of gone off the radar a little bit. Gary Anderson, like I said, has not been on it as well. 
But I think, I think, like I say, I think on the big occasion, both good on the big occasion. I think Gary Anderson will probably just have a little bit too much because of his power scoring. I'm gonna say another one. I'm gonna say another 10, 10 8 I think it's they're all close. Um, yeah, I think Gary Anderson wins ten eight. There we go. So, folks, as to who I think will be a sort of dark horse in the tournament, I think there's probably three I can sort of see on the list. I think Damien Hetter's one of them. I think uh, Luke Humphreys is another. And... Mm, what do I dare say? I think, I think Danny Knopper as well. Um, has to be have has a shout out as well. Mike and obviously, the favourites obviously like Van Gerwen, Peter Wright. Um, uh, obviously, uh, people like Michael Smith. Um, I I think and obviously James Wade. I think you have to sort of mention them. To who I think will win it, I just have a feeling this year there's going to be. Um, I I just got a feeling there's I think. Oh, how can you? I don't think Peter Wright is good enough to win it. I, I just don't think he's in good enough form to win it. MVG, I do not know. Oof. I mean, you could shout Luke Humphries as well. He's been phenomenal. I, it's too difficult. But if you give me a five, if you give me a ten pound bet, and had a go, I probably would go. I know it's probably the born way. It'll either be probably Michael Van Gerwen or Earl Gerwen Price. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me. But it's when it, oh, I don't know, it's, it's tough to call. But do you know what? I'm going to throw it out there. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to sit on the fence. Do you know what? I'm going to go for a Michael Smith win. Michael Smith wins the tournament. I don't know who I'll have in the final. Oh, the little spiders come back again. I know, mate. <laughs> so I think Michael Smith is eventually now going to win his first major tournament. And hoping he does. So some tasty games there, folks. And uh, some tasty names there. Like I said, probably the most open tournament probably in, in many years. I think there's probably 10, 10, 12 names that can win it there this year. That you know That's how open it is, I think. Um, yeah, and I think that's it. But there we go, folks. So like I say, thanks for putting up with me for the best part of over 20-something minutes. Um, I am going to end it there, but like I say, don't forget, folks, to subscribe to my channel and uh, like my video and give me your thoughts. Obviously, as always, who will win the World Match Play 2022? And I'm looking forward to hearing um, what you say, really, comments and all that stuff. So give me your favourites who I think who will win it and give me your sort of dark horse who you think could win it. But like I said, I'm going to go for a dark horse. I'm going to go Luke Humphreys. And for the winner, I think I'm going to go Michael Smith. There we go. So I've put it out there. <laughs> but anyway, folks. So I'm going to end it there. And uh, thanks for putting up with me, like I said, for tw over 20-odd minutes. And uh, like I say, thanks for watching as always. And I hope you like this video. And I hope, like I said, you give me your thoughts and comments on what will happen. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you. But for now, folks, that will be it. And, uh, and I'll be hopefully doing another video soon on the darts after when it's all finished and give you sort of my review on it and uh and yeah and there we go so anyway folks thanks for watching as always take care and stay safe and i shall speak to you soon for some more hopefully darts talk bye folks